since I have a little time to do this today, this might be a sore subject for somebody. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know if there's any service writers that actually watch my channel. When you become a service writer at a dealership, there's a certain amount of training that you go through to become a service writer. And even when you go through advanced Ford tech school and stuff like that, you have to learn how to fill out all the Ford paperwork. It's mandatory. They don't let you leave the class or graduate from the program until you, you learn everything. You learn how the process is. If you go into like the PTS website through Ford, they actually have all the literature there for you to help your dealership out and the service riders out on start to finish what you need to do as a service rider to best set that technician up for fixing that job. Lately, there's been a lot of problems. And I know this is an ongoing problem in dealerships. But as technicians, we sometimes feel like we get screwed enough by the manufacturer. Um, you, When you come in to fix a vehicle and you have to diagnose it, a lot of times that diagnostics goes past the time that you do get paid, if you even get paid. So the more time that a service rider can save us, the better off we'll be. Now, this is just an example, and it, this is an annoying example, and I know it's kind of petty, but I got a ticket Wednesday. It said, replace driver panel, or replace panel on driver door. So I go out to the service drive. I've already got four tickets sitting on my box that have to be worked on. I'm already crunched for time as it is. And other techs are the same way. You know, sometimes we get really... Um, stressed out because of the amount of work that's laid on top of us and a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, you have to at some point take accountability for what you have, the workload that you have and say, hey, enough's enough. You're letting these customers come in and you're booking these jobs too quick and the time management is way off knowing that we could run into issues. So as a service writer, you have to know your techs. You have to know what their strong suits are, you have to know about what it will take diagnostics based on the repetition of, of you doing this and how good that tech is at diagnosing something and what type of time frame he's going to need to come up with an answer. Now I go out to the truck that's in the service drive and I'm looking on the outside of the door. I don't see anything missing. All the plastics there, the mirrors there, the handle bezel and stuff's there. I open the door up. I'm not seeing anything inside the door that needs to be replaced. I lay down on the ground and I'm looking at the bottom of the door to see if something's missing and there's nothing underneath that's missing. I'm just doing things that I wouldn't normally do because I'm trying to figure out literally what this message is on this this uh, this report, uh, my repair order, that says something on the driver door needs to be replaced. So I spend like 15-20 minutes looking at this door over and over and over again because the service rider's not even there. It's the service rider's day off. So I go gra grab another service writer, and I'm like, hey, what's the deal with this, man? I mean, these messages that you guys leave us sometimes don't even explain exactly what the customer's saying. Like, what's going on with this? So they don't know what's going on. So I go to parts, and I said, look, is this a part that was already ordered? Because nobody's giving me any answers here to let me know. Did the customer already come in and get this diagnosed? Who diagnosed this to say that this part needs to be replaced? Ideally, it would go back to that technician so he can make the money on that job, and it's not another tech that is going to make money on it. Well, I go to parts. I ask for the part. And I'm saying I'm looking for a driver door piece that somebody ordered. And they're like, wait a second. That's not a driver door piece. It's a seat plastic piece that has nothing to do with the door at all. So I go back to the vehicle and I see the piece of plastic that's missing. But this is a truck where that piece of plastic often comes off. And the customer just chooses not to replace it anyway. It's the earlier model F-150s where the plastic piece by the, the seat belt actually breaks off and eventually it's going to break off again. People are lazy when they're getting their, they get in their vehicle so they drag their butt across the seat and they crush that piece of plastic right there that kind of dresses up the, or the seat belt anchor point. Or the seat belt anchor point. And I was like, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff that we get into situation-wise when you... Don't do your job initially up front because I understand you're probably under a lot of stress as well. So then this compounding effect of you being under stress, writing the wrong thing down on the piece of paper, the te technician wasting a lot of time and stuff like that, trying to figure out exactly what's going on with that particular thing that you wrote down. And then especially if it's a service writer's day off and you can't get a hold of them, 
what are you supposed to do? These are the things that happen in a, in a dealership often that don't make any sense. Normally, people are like, you know what? I'm going to end up breaking that piece again anyway. Just leave it off. I don't care. This truck's got 140,000 miles on it. I'm not going to worry about replacing it right now unless I go trade it in and they want me or the dealership will invest the money in replacing that. Um, it's There's been several situations like this as well. A customer came in a couple days ago with a Mustang and said something about the driver door sound. Um, there's a lot of like noise coming from the driver door when I start to hit 35, 40 mile an hour. But what the actual service writer wrote down on the paperwork was driver window makes noise when going up and down. So I'm in the car, I'm rolling the window up, rolling it down, rolling it up, rolling it down. It's not making any noise. Put it back outside to let it get cold and maybe it's a cold type noise instead of like an indoor temperature or warm type noise. Still not doing it. So I've got 30 minutes in this vehicle trying to figure out what's going on with this window and then I was tired of messing around and I just called the customer directly up and I was like, hey bud, what's going on with this vehicle? I noticed your, your door is not really aligned very good. The front bumper and stuff all looks like it's got new paint and stuff on it. Were you in an accident? And he says, yeah, I was actually. I uh, told your service writer that I got into an accident and I had the, the collision repair shop put a new bumper on it, fender, door, and kind of paint match everything because black's an actual really easy color to paint match. So they didn't have to paint the whole entire car. They were able to blend very good. I said, I noticed that. I noticed you're probably going to have to take that back to the body shop. And I'm, I'm hearing a little, when I test drove the vehicle, uh, because there was another concern I was looking for, I heard some wind noise around the front mirror. Is that what you're talking about? I noticed that the door, instead of it sitting up in the jam, like in the, the, the door opening like it's supposed to, it's kind of kicked back a hair and it's pulled out a hair. So that's probably going to have to be readjusted by that body shop that did everything for you so you can get that door back up and it'll put pressure on the seal like it's supposed to and it'll actually close properly. And he said, yeah, you know what, you're right. I need to just take it back to the body shop. So now here we are, 30 minutes into looking into the car, uh, 15, 20 minutes test driving it, trying to trying to get paperwork, call a customer and stuff like that. And it's just a, a, a loss of information from the very beginning. When that customer came in, they told them it's a wind type noise. And it wasn't the window going up and down. It was when you were driving at 35, 40 mile an hour. Do you guys experience anything like this? Is this frustrating to you when you have to go through this every single day? And this is a common thing in the dealership. Do you ever get so frustrated that you feel like, why am I doing this? You know, why I love my job, but I hate wasting time. I hate getting poor information. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever run across these situations where somebody's not giving you the information that was given to them, but they're in such a hurry and they have so much stress going on in their life, they drop the ball and then it causes more stress and more frustration in your life. And then you're like, should I just be the service writer as well as the technician? Because I would already think to, ans to ask these questions up front. You know, what is the customer's complaint? When do you experience this? At what mile per hour do you experience this? Is it when, it, when it's cold or is it when it's hot that you experience this? Is this with the window up or the window down? Has any recent repairs been done to the vehicle that I might need to know about? You know, these type of questions. But people simply get stressed out and they don't ask this stuff. And it seems to be a reoccurring problem. Isn't it frustrating as a technician and the, the value of your work that you have to put so much time into things sometimes that you just, you're like, sometimes like, why, do, why am I doing this? You know, this is hours every week just gone that you don't get paid for and you're like wow i'm not an hourly technician i'm a flat rate technician i need to work to make money i don't know i just figured i'd open up the floor to you guys to see what your thoughts are on this and uh maybe you share some of the same sentiment that i do here these are topics that i don't ever hear people talking about and maybe this could open some dialogue up between us so maybe we can work with our service writers better to help change some of this maybe educate them um, what are your tips? What are your suggestions? What have you dealt with? Let me know. Thank you.